Well, good morning. Welcome to the Art of Fire. And in answer to the question, how you going to keep them down on a farm after they've seen the Well, build a studio in the barn. There you go. All right. Good morning. I'm Bruce. I'll be doing your filming and narration. And before we make our grand entry, just thought I'd give you a little view of what surrounds us here at the Art of Fire. You've heard saying that people can't see the forest for the trees when they get too involved in the details and don't pay attention to what's going on around them. Well, if you look across the road, that field over there, all those things that look like a bunch of sticks, they're really a lot of trees. We are surrounded by acres and acres of tree farm. So we really are out here in a rural area. So let's go on in the studio. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning, Renee. And good morning, Sharon. Glad to have you all with us. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, they are beautiful grounds, Barbara. We're very happy here. So let's take an entry into the studio and see what's in store today. All right, so this is our gallery area. We've shown you some before. So, uh, hello, David Hogan, and a happy Tuesday to you, too. So here we go in through the gallery area, and today, since we are just barely into spring, we're going to put a little spring in our step, and with Easter coming this weekend, we're going to be themed around things that are colorful and flowers and other such things, and here are some samples of the types of work we're going to do. We don't have all of them on display today, because actually we've sold them, but uh, we'll be making them anyway. Some of them you may have seen before, but you'll get a good description of them as we go along. So our order of events today, actually we're not going to start off with a bunny. What we're going to start with today is a custom order that Foster's received. Someone uh, wanted, hi from here, Susan Haas says. Well, hello from, from there and hello from here. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Foster is going to start working on a custom order. It will show you one of his uh, uh, stemless wine glasses, okay? And then after that, we'll get into the springtime theme of things with a, a little spring in our step. We'll have a bunny. Then we'll have a fairly large egg, which is a, a really unique creation. They're really beautiful. And uh, since there's going to be flowers popping up all over the place, we'll have a glass flower. And in addition to that, we'll have a jack in the pulpit, which is another flowering plant that's quite beautiful, but also translates very well into a vase. Now, we do have several of those on display right here. So that's what the jack in the pulpit, one of those, will uh, it'll be a variation of that. And then uh, springtime, birds chirping and the whole bit will be make a bird for you also. Before we go any further, uh, last week's winner of this beautiful paperweight, is Sharon Durney, and we'll be shipping that off to Sharon just as soon as she gets in touch with us. Next week's prize is going to be this uh, red and white jack in the pulpit. So if you would like that, get your comments in, because when you put the comments in, that's what gets you entered in the drawing, okay? Also, we have uh, the Maryland cats going on. Okay, well, thank you all for the birthday wishes. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Um, today and tomorrow, the last couple days of that, uh, we're making these cats just for the month of March to benefit the charity No Kid Hungry. The cats are $60 a piece. Half of that goes towards the charity. So you're really helping out a worthwhile cause when you order these. It was limited production. It's just uh, this month ends at, uh, March 31st at the stroke of midnight. Thank you, Lynn. And uh, so anyway, what we'll have uh, Todd busy making them however long it takes to get all of them, or, uh, all the orders filled. They will be individually signed and numbered, and it is a limited production. So we've got that going on. And, uh, all right, so let's see who's up first or who's on first. Thank you. Happy Bruce Day, David Hogan says. That's pretty cool. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce's birthday and my mother-in-law, Debbie, happy birthday. Aha, Josh's mother-in-law. So happy, happy birthday to Debbie. Okay, so into the glass blowing. What you going to do for us? Good. We're going to, uh, as you. We're going to, uh, I have an order for a 
step with for a power step with flying glass, we're going to go ahead and make the prototype piece that we'll use calipers on for uniform size. But it will be a clear background with a multi colored print or crushed colored glass that will pick up into the lower portions of the step with flying glass. Then we're going to blow it into a mold, which is actually a two That's made out of cherry wood, similar to our blocks. So here, for the mold, we get our basic shape here, and we'll go ahead, close it up, and inflate the glass, kick it open, and extricate the glass, or take the glass out from the mold, and continue to go ahead and manipulate it. So, we have this hex jewel. in the iron warmer, and we're going to get our first gather of glass to start it. Right, so look at the comments about the uh, ball. Note. Okay, and um, so we'll watch Foster here. We'd like to apologize for the issues we had. I believe it was last week when things were cutting out. Um, over time, we had not been using the internet to power these broadcasts. The audio was a little bit sketchy, the video sometimes froze, but otherwise it was working pretty well. So what we decided to do last week was hook up to the Internet. Why am I telling you all of this now? Because if we start losing the comments like we did last week, we're going to switch off of this, get off the Internet, and get back to where we can talk to you. Because really we found out last week that what makes this whole episode thing really work and enjoyable is our interaction with you. You can go on YouTube or Facebook or any number of places and just watch a glass blower working. But there's not many places you can go and talk to the glass blowers while they're doing it and find out what's going on. So that's why the long-winded explanation of what's going to happen. So if it starts getting screwed up, don't give up on us. We've gotten really good at switching horses. Okay. So Foster's used the cherry wood block there, and so uh, he's got the bubble set in the glass. He's letting it cool a little bit before he gathers again. Yeah, I'm really sorry for the choppy sound. That's uh, happening to some of you. Some of you is not, but... Uh, we're going to carry on for a while. Switch over. I, I don't, I'm thinking we're still. I'm barking up very bad. Okay. <laughs> I know that's breaking up. That's fine. Uh, we'll tr we might try a switch over in between pieces, so you don't really miss something, and we'll see if it's any better. So Foster's brought the glass back now, and it, this looks like a block. It's kind of a half mold and it gets the glass shaped like he wants. Now he's going to roll across the line of frit, which is granular glass, and that's going to pick up, and this will be on the bottom of the stemless wine glass. So once he gets an adequate coverage on that, he'll just have the glass shaped. And now he'll blow into the pipe again, trap the air, and you'll see the bubble expand inside. And of course, that's the interior of the glass. Now it's back to the glory hole to reheat. And as we've told you before, and we'll tell you again because this is really what there, all there is about glass blowing, is uh, I think you need to switch because it's really bad. Okay, well, this piece won't take but a few minutes. We will switch between pieces, folks, and see how it works out, okay? So uh, Foster's going to grab another block now. And he's going to change the shape of this a little bit. And then he's going to begin to cut a jackline or a neckline with the metal blades there. Okay? So Joanna is hearing us in London. London as in the UK, Great Britain, London. So 
The sound is traveling across the Atlantic Ocean. Actually, the electrons are in regenerating sound over there. But I digress, and that happens a lot. Okay, and this business about going back to the glory hole, you'll notice that Foster only had probably a minute or less while he was actually working at the bench. Then the glass begins to cool off and he's got to go over and reheat. Now it's time for the mold. He'll place the glass in the opening at the top of the mold, hold it closed with his foot, blow hard, turn the pipe, see the steam coming out, kicks it open, and there is the shape of the glass. So all that remains to be done now is to flatten the bottom so that it will sit up right on the customer's table. Not very good audio in Germany today. Sorry, Barbara. <laughs> I, I guess we got across the uh, Atlantic to Great Britain, and then the English Channel presented a problem. Okay, so Foster will flatten the bottom and reinforce the neckline or jack line, shape the piece a little bit, and then we'll work on the top of it. You can notice as he moves the jacks through a different angle or posture that it changes the shape of the glass. And there's that characteristic slope in the wide bottom of stemless wide glass. By flattening the bottom, he ensures that it'll sit level on the table. Also, there's a slight indentation in it. He puts that indentation in there so that uh, when the hunty goes in there, it does, if it uh, so we're watching him hang that up right now. Okay, he's going to do this one alone. So he's hung the piece up. Quite often we do blow glass alone. And Foster's showing you how we do that right now. So by hanging the piece for just a little bit, he'll come back, form the punty, put the piece on the, on the bench, and then he'll stick it up to the punty and take care of the break off himself. And he can let go of the piece while it's halfway up the bench because he has a couple of stops at the end of the bench. So now, just like you've seen him do before, he'll align it with the center of the bottom. He'll turn the pipe some, and he does turn both pipes fully. We'll back up and see that. Then a little water on the neck, and then striking the pipe, the vibration breaks the glass free. The pipe doesn't fall off the bench, again, because he's got a couple of stops or wood screws stuck in there. So, oh, I was talking about the indentation in the bottom. Once the punty comes off of that, we don't want the punty to be able to scar a tabletop or anything. So by having the little indentation, the, any residual punty glass is left in a small recess. And before we ever ship these out, we cut that down with a little grinding stone so it wouldn't cut anyone. So he's done the lower half of the vessel now. He's reheating mainly the upper part. We'll take a look over here from the side. Perhaps you can see that he doesn't have the piece fully into the glory hole. He's heating the top primarily. Once he gets that hot, he'll take it back to the bench and begin the opening process. Now that area of the glass was cold enough to fracture, so it reasonably takes a little while to get it hot enough to move. It's got a little bit of a yellowish orange glow to it that indicates heat. That little flame you saw right there was from the wax that is on the jacks. And what the wax does is provide a little lubrication, but if it comes in contact with a hot glass, then it kind of flakes up. Barbara, I'm sorry you've lost the audio completely. Uh, I'd use American Sign Language, but I have arthritis in my hands, and I'm afraid that would look like I had a stutter. So what we'll do is just stick with uh, what we've got and uh, hope that we will, tra we will train sober, folks. So there's going to be a momentary loss of signal after Foster finishes this. I'll tell you when, and then we'll come right back on to Facebook Live. You may have to rejoin the event but we'll get it done. All right, so Foster now is opening just a little bit more on this. Uh, okay, Pamela Johnson wants to know the price of the eggs. Um, 
and Theta can probably help you out with that. She will boost that information. Foster now has got the opening up there. Beautiful job on that. And what he'll do in a few moments as he gets this done is he will start taking caliper measurements so that when he makes another one to go with this later on, they'll be perfectly matched. So, if you too would like to order a piece custom made, just get in touch with us, artify.com or 301-253-6642. Uh, Foster, how much are the stemless ones? They're 65 a pair. 65 a pair, Lind uh, Bear, okay? So uh, the eggs I wasn't sure of, but uh, this we can get. So now it's time to take the piece off the punty iron. Foster's going to use butter knife to chip around the punty joint. He's not trying to knock it off. He's simply trying to create a weak spot to fracture. When he taps that pipe with a hammer handle, it will break free at that joint and he'll grab his insulated gloves. Here he goes with the tap. Several taps, and there it goes. We have to be patient with it sometimes. Now we grab his insulated glove, grab it, and there's the finished product, and he'll be making the mate to it later. So if you'd like to order anything, uh, just let us know. And if you order in a timely manner or would like to see it made, you can probably arrange to do that too. So let's see here. Okay, yeah. Just like they do on the old TV shows. We'll be right back. Just pretend it's a commercial, okay? Finish. Uh, let's try. Let's try changing it over and see if it'll stay on. without having to leave. So could somebody give us a little feedback? How about comment if you've got us right now? You probably had to listen to that whole little bit of nonsense as Jock and I tried to figure out how to disconnect the Internet. Okay, still here. Okay. All right, now, now we can do a little bit of scientific comparison. We can find out how good or bad the sound is now. Okay, what am I, Mr. Cotter? <laughs> okay, so now we've had the custom order done. Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter! Okay, uh, next we're going to go with a bunny, and we'll be following that up with several other pieces. Also, like to mention again the uh, Maryland cats, okay? And these are uh, $60 a piece, half goes toward charity, shipping's included except overseas. We had uh, Sharon won the. Uh, uh, paperweight from last week. Keep commenting. You could win this jack in the pulpit right here. So let's go ahead and get back here with Josh, who is going to make a bunny for us because hippity hop to the barber shop. It's almost Easter. Not just any bunny, a blue bunny. A what? A blue bunny. A blue bunny. A blue bunny. Oh, okay. Is this like a blue moon? It's like the second one of the month or something? The or a harvest? A harvest month? moon or uh, well I think what it was that got that ship out of Suez Canal was the super moon wasn't it uh, something about the uh, the tides in the Suez Canal were higher because of the super moon the proximity of the moon to the earth you know you never know what you're going to hear on these broadcasts do you even I'm surprised Blue Bunny ice cream. I like that. I've heard of Blue Bonnet, but uh, we can have Blue Bunny ice cream. Oh, I don't know if the hunters amongst us would be in favor of bunny flavored ice cream. Okay. You're no bunny till somebody loves you. That's a good one, Barbara. Barbara Gould Belzer. I, th I think that really takes the prize right there. Okay. All right. So Josh is picking up the white frit surrounding all that clear glass with it. You won't be able to see it. He's making a peep. Yeah, oh yeah, we, he makes enough noise. It's never a peep, believe me. Okay, and then he's going to coat it in a, uh, what is that, copper blue? Yeah, copper blue. Copper blue, beautiful color. 
so why, good. why is it called copper blue? It doesn't look like copper. It doesn't look like copper. It's probably because it's made with magnesium? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's made with copper. Susan says, hop to it, Josh. Yeah. Hey, let's see if he can put both feet off the ground while he's at the marver. Huh? There's a challenge. <laughs> I'll do it if you do it. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, uh, you know what? I can, I can just lift this camera and tell everybody I've got my two. There you go. Two feet off the ground. Okay. And by two feet, I don't mean 24 inches. I mean both of your bipeds off the floor a little bit. He's using the cherry wood block now to shape the glass. It'll help cool it just a little bit. The cherry wood is uh, a nice fruit wood that we use. You can use others, but cherry wood seems to be the most uh, common. And it's got a nice tight grain. That cup is cut green and shaped, and then it stays in water. This is to avoid cracking. And when it uh, encounters the hot glass, it forms a bed of steam, almost like a lubricant for the gl uh, glass to glide across. Josh will now cover that with more clear glass if he holds the pipe in his hands up high and points it downward in the furnace, he's letting some glass drizzle off. Now, the other tree is watching it just fall right off the end of the piece. Okay, so the glass is fluid enough at that point, the viscosity is such that it flows right off the end of the iron. After he blocks this, we're going to ask him to point it downward again and you'll see that it doesn't flow at all like that. Now he can point it down and it's not going anywhere. This is how quick the glass can begin cooling. And also the block helps cool it. But even without blocking. Uh, yes, we did an uh, now this week's giveaway. Uh, we're going Sharon Bernie won the paperweight. And this week we have a jack in the pulpit. And I'll show you that when we uh, get back over to uh, turn it around. Okay. So after he's got this glass fully cooled, he grabs the newspaper, quick like a bunny, that's right. The newspaper forms a perfect insulator that he's allowed to, it makes him uh, able to grab the glass with his hand and shape it. You can see that he's tapering it toward the outboard end of the glass. That uh, newspaper is about seven sheets folded really tight and then wet. He's using the jacks right now, the metal blades, to form a point of separation from the solid iron that he's gathered on. Did you just say I was seven sheets? What's that? Did you say I was seven sheets to the wind? Is that what you said? No. <laughs> <laughs> seven sheets to the wind, yeah. Okay, so now that he's got that, he's going to work on creating the divisions between the body and the head. And then the next dividing line will separate the top of the head from the ears. He's got a pair of blades that come down nice and flat. We'll get an end view of that. And you can see how he's created that surface. And now what's interesting is watch what happens to the glass as he shears it. One ear is raised in relation to the other. That works the same way if you cut a sheet of paper with scissors, one side gets pushed up. Simply means that he comes back, pushes it around, and gets them aligned so that they're even. Yes, short division, David. Barbara Gould Belzer says, three sheets to the wind is more common, Josh. If you're seven sheets, you're probably horizontal. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, indeed. The sheets are horizontal <laughs> when they're folded up. No, the uh, the glass blower is, and and you would never be glass blowing in that condition anyway. All right. So now he's going to use the jacks just to create a little bit of separation point there. All righty. Now he's going to turn the iron over to Foster, who will keep heating it a little at a time, giving it flash heats. And what this will do is keep just enough heat in it to keep it from cracking, but not so much heat that it distorts. 
Josh is getting a glove on right now, and he's going to use these thin pieces of black glass down here to draw the details on the bunny. He's using a torch that combines oxygen and propane. It's extremely hot. What does that run about? 2,500 degrees? Okay, so it's really hot, and his hand is close to it, so for this he's using a glove. Each tip of the piece of black glass and puts it on, and when he turns it around like that, twirls it a little bit, that allows it to burn free. He'll do that for the other eye now. And this little twirling motion, the glass just burns right off. He has to keep the end of that stick of glass hot so that when he brings it down, it will adhere. It looks like black tips on the bunny's ears. I think that's actually looking through the clear glass, okay? But, uh, yeah, he didn't put any black in there. Okay, so Foster's reheating now. Over here at the glory hole, just enough to keep it from cracking. The glass may move a little bit, but we don't want it moving a lot. All right, Pamela Johnson Ritter just placed order. Thank you, Pamela. Got her, oh, two Maryland cats. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so now he's putting some whiskers alongside the nose, very small lines. You can see that the flame is a little finer right now, and he's able to control just a little bit of glass coming off the end of that black stick. And we call that stick a stringer, or sometimes a cane. Stringers are really usually very thin. If they have time, can they make my bunny live? Um, we'll have to find out from Theta about the colors and whatnot, and we'll see what time, how much time we have at the end of the show. But yes, uh, we, we'll see what we can do to arrange that, Pamela. Right now, here goes the tail on this bunny. All righty, there we go. Susie got a Christmas bunny in December. You might, yes, you might need an Easter bunny. I would say so. Yes, absolutely. And then a Mother's Day bunny and a Father's Day bunny, a graduation bunny, a bunny, bunny. A Fourth of July bunny. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Okay, so he's just making final adjustments to the face here, getting everything all. So you can see he can push with the tweezers, and it takes a fair bit of force to move the glass. It's still hot enough to move, but not a great deal. Yeah, a Tuesday bunny. Yeah, we can do one of those every week. A birthday bunny. Yes, that's for me. That's right. That, that was Bruce Bunny. <laughs> Bruce Bunny, okay. All right, so a little bit of water on the joint, the jack line between the glass and pipe. And then when he strikes that, it will break free. Foster will take the bunny and put it in the annealer. There is our bunny. The bottle will be brown flat so it sits upright. And there we go. A beer bunny. I like the idea of that. Okay, so into the annealer it goes, and let's hear it for Josh. Nice job there, Josh Thank you. and Foster. Beautiful work. The annealing process is the longest part of the glass blowing. Uh, we put all our glass into one of these annealers when we finish the piece, and regardless of the temperature of the glass at the time we put it away, it'll come down to 900 degrees or so, which is what the annealer runs at. And the glass is safe there, but the glass has what's called an annealing temperature, and it also has, uh, well, it's got a whole range of temperatures. And for this glass, it runs from about 850 down to 700 degrees. We need, yes, they are multiplying. That's why we only put one bunny in the oven at a time. 
So there you go, a variation on bun in the oven with an NY. Hey, where else could you hear that kind of nonsense? All right. Yeah, I love it too. So there goes the bunny. And then next up after that, we're going to have an egg, uh, an Easter egg or a spring egg, if you will. And then uh, flour and then another type of flour. But instead of being just a flower, it'll be a vase in the shape of a jack in the pulpit and then a bird. All right. Don't forget, we do offer gift certificates. I'll kind of zero in on one over there in the background. So if you'd like to give somebody a gift of glass and you don't have an idea what they might really want, give them a gift certificate. They can pick it out themselves. Sharon Durney, good morning. I don't know if this is your first check-in, but you were the winner of the paperweight. So congratulations. Can you make peeps? Uh, yeah, but you'd break your teeth on them. So, uh, yes, we probably could. They're basically just a, a, a shape similar to the buddy. We could do little ducks and stuff. The Art of Fire Comedy Hour. I Yeah, I'm sorry about that. We just got wired up today either on too much coffee or something. And away we go, as Jackie Gleason used to say. And how many of you in the audience know who Jackie Gleason was? Oh, man. You, you got a sign. <laughs> really? Don't forget, we do offer t-shirts also, okay? Just like Josh and Foss and I are wearing today. Uh, we've got a lot of cool designs, and one of them's really neat. Uh, Todd's, Todd's daughter, Violet, came up with a design for the Happy Cat shirt. So, uh, there we go on that. So you can order a shirt, and we'll be doing uh, more glass blowing right now. Don't forget that this is the last couple of days of the Maryland Cats. Cats for Kids. We support the charity No Kid Hungry, and the Cats $60.00. Half of which goes to charity, uh, shipping's included, unless you're overseas. And uh, you're welcome, Sharon Durney. I'm glad, glad we caught you, and you can find out live that you were the winner of that. Oh, somebody else asked about today's prize. Let me wander back over here. Today's is going to be this Jack in the Pulpit little vase, okay, this beautiful piece right here. And that will be part of the drawing. So if you comment, you'll be entered in the drawing. We really like it when you share also. When you share, it increases our viewership, and that really helps us out. And uh, also like, because who doesn't like to be liked, okay? All right. So uh, Josh is getting ready now to get started on the egg. Yep, on the egg. What was that, Josh? Exactly? Exactly. Okay. All right, here we go, again with the white frit. What's with the white frit all the time, huh? Huh? It's made everything bright. Ah, okay. Actually, what's really cool about the white frit in the background is that the transparent colors that will overlie it allow light to pass through. And then when it hits that opaque surface, it's reflected back more or less, and it makes those transparent colors even more vibrant. So yep. it's always great when we manage to back up our transparent colors with white, if that's the design we're looking for. Quite often, we will use just straight-up transparent colors. They're very beautiful. Uh, they t depend more at that point for light to transmit through the piece. Great expectations. That's a good one, Kimberly. All right, let's go. Everybody, give us your egg jokes. Yep, it's time. We haven't had a session like this in a no, while. Egg yolks. Oh, okay, more egg yolks, yeah, okay. All righty. So here we go again with the cherry wood block. Now you can see the steam coming off of it. That's created when the hot glass meets the wet wood. Josh will blow into the blow pipe, cover the hole with his finger and you can see the diameter increase. Now in this case we can't see the bubble. Oh, Fern says, come on guys, don't egg Bruce off. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And as you've probably gathered, it doesn't take a lot to egg me on. Alright, so in a case like this where the opaque glass covers 
everything and you cannot see. You're cracking us up, Bruce. Ha! Ah. Yes. This is getting better and better. <laughs> Good morning, Patricia. Welcome aboard. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, in the opaque glass, we look more toward the shape of the glass and watch the movement. Ah, David Hogan. We are scrambling to keep up. Yes. Okay. Does this mean that once we've finished uh, at 1 o'clock, it'll be over easy? All right, so he's picking up the two colors in this, and these are mixes of colors, and we have a green and a blue mix, okay? So there are several different greens in this row here, and several different blues in there. And so what will happen with these is they will be gathered up. The lower half of the vessel is going to be the dark green color, the upper half is going to be the blue and uh, copper blue and teal it looks like, well maybe some teal in the green here, okay? So, he's got the frit picked up and they form, as you can see, they're little shards, so on the surface of the glass they just look like little dots. So what Josh is going to work toward doing here shortly is stretching those dots out into lines, alright? And he'll do this by putting the glass on the marver and rolling mainly in one direction. Clockwise. As opposed to... Say it, Josh. <laughs> say it. Winter, say it. Winter yeah, skins. getting the hard boy. No, winter it's skins. Now we can't say it. It's yeah. now. <laughs> no longer... All right. But you can see how the friction against the metal tabletop causes the glass there to stretch out into the line. We'll do that through the, which came first? Well, actually the frit and then the twist. Oh, you mean the chicken and the egg? Ah, uh, that I can't answer. Okay, so, he'll work on twisting this up more. And when we do this, the tip of the end of the glass doesn't twist quite as much. It's what's closer to the pipe that gets most of the twist. So what we can do in that case is at some point grab the end of the glass with a pair of shears or a another tool and provide the final amount of twist. So Josh grabs his dime shear, holds the end and turns towards himself so he's still moving the glass clockwise. That gave us the twist all the way down to the bottom. Now he's going to straighten out the shape a little bit. Okay, so he's got still two color zones on there. He's got his blue mix and he's got his green mix. The blue is close to the pipe, that'll be the top of the vessel, and the green is closer to the tip, that'll be the bottom of the vessel, but now what he's going to do is mix them, okay? Ah, that's pretty good, I was uh, watching with no sound, but she got dragged into a meeting, and she's watching us, that's wonderful, thank you! She's watching us? She's watching, I like, Sanders. Oh, she's watching with no sound because she got stuck in a meeting, and she'd rather watch us. But I'm sure everybody else in the meeting wouldn't rather hear us, especially the nonsense today. All right, so Josh is heating this up, and he's getting the surface really hot. He's got a hooking tool in his right hand, and when he pulls this piece out of the glass, he'll angle the pipe and then use the hooking tool to start dragging the glass back through itself. So just like you got dragged into a meeting, Josh is getting dragged in the glass. There he pulls back on it toward the pipe, he'll flip it over and drag the other side back. So this is creating an upward line in the glass. It's grabbing the green glass at the bottom. Jill Mock Joubert says, I do that too. Well, that's really cool. We got, we got people that are supposed to be doing something else watching <laughs> us. Oh, man. All right, so he got two of those lines in place. Now he's going to do the other two sides. So these are on uh, all four sides. And some smarty pants is going to say, how can there be sides to a round piece of glass, Bruce? But I will say that the lines are spaced 90 degrees apart. All right, so now you can see those lines coming up through the glass. Now, quite often in pieces we make, you've seen us twist up, pull those lines or feather the glass in both directions. 
In this particular case, Josh, uh, Tristan is here until his her meeting starts at 1230. Wow, this is really great. All right, so in this particular case, Josh is not going to drag the glass in the opposite direction, but what he will do is twist this glass also. So by placing it on the marver again and turning in one direction only, the friction is now taking those lines that we can call vertical. The first time he twisted, he had lines going horizontally across the piece. This time he pulled those rake lines upward, and now you can see where they're twisted, creating a diagonal pattern throughout the glass. Cheryl got her cat and paperweight yesterday, and she loves them. Well, we're glad to hear that. All right, and Sharon says that she works from home, so she watches us too. Wow, that is so cool. Again, Josh is grabbing the end of the glass just to get the final little bits of twist in it. And now he's going to work on shaping the glass. So everything he's done so far has been by way of decoration. It's not really so much creating the piece. You can see the diameter of that increase a little bit from the air he blew into the pipe. And now he'll also be using a blow hose. It attaches that hose to the mouthpiece end of the iron. And he's got a little, uh, good morning, Ruth. Okay. Just finished work time for glass. Great, Ruth. Glad to have you with us. All right, so Josh has the blow hose now. For those of you that may have joined us just recently, we're making an egg, okay, in celebration of springtime and Easter and all such uh, new life type things. All right. The blow hose is a great tool because it allows him to not only use the hand tools at the bench, but blow at the same time. So normally he would have to stand up, move the pipe around to blow. So now let's get a shot from back here. You can see that he's blowing gently. At the same time, he cuts a jack line. The bottom of the piece is increasing in diameter. Ooh, good job at explaining the steps. I love it. Oh, this is so cool. And now you can see our egg shape taking sh shape right here now. The colors are really marvelous. They're intermixed. You'll be able to see them better when the photos come online tomorrow. But now you can see how all that extra twisting created such a beautiful pattern. You want to set up the uh, Yeah, we'll put the hole in so now we're going to get into a different type of putty. So I know that we've had a couple of folks on our broadcast who are glass blowers or students. What you're going to see now is called a blow punty. Okay? And it takes a little while to prepare, but the first order of business, Josh is going to take a piece of tungsten rod that's stuck into the... Uh, uh, pliers there okay and get it really hot and then he's going to poke a hole in the bottom of the piece so he goes right for the center of the bottom he keeps the heat on it and he pushes that tungsten rod directly into the glass and all the way through why you might ask did he just feel like it no because this takes a lot longer to do. But in a few moments, after we do the transfer, he's going to close the top of the vessel. And if both the top and the bottom of the vessel are enclosed, and you subject it to heat, the air inside expands, and it will expand beyond where you want. Not only that, when it cools, it will cool down and shrink. So Josh has gathered some glass on the end of a blowpipe. He's heating that up, and now he's going to... He's going to blow through it and completely pop the bubble off the end. So this is open now. He's going to knock those little shards off and then heat it up. 
So what this is going to do is provide a place for air to move in and out of the piece and also for him to blow and inflate it a little bit. So he'll step back out of the way. Foster will flash the piece for a moment and Josh will get this blow point. So let's get a close-up of this. Yeah, let's get a close-up of a blowing iron with a hole in the glass. <laughs> yeah, that's really exciting, Bruce. Actually, uh, if you've never done this, it is kind of exciting. Okay, so now this will make a complete seal around the hole that Josh poked in the glass with the tungsten rod. Now, as usual, we'll wet the jack line, and then vibration will break it free of the pipe. So for right now, at this moment, he has a hole in both ends, the opening at the top, and then the blow punty at the bottom. But he's going to close the top of this off. And when he does that, that's when the blow punty, or the opening at the bottom, becomes essential. Now, if this were just a sculpture and he were just going to close the top and he didn't need to blow it out anymore, he could do this without a blow punty. He could have poked a hole elsewhere in the bottom. But he's not going to get that beautiful egg shape unless he can close the top, shape it with the folded newspaper, and blow at the same time. A hole in two. Yes, it is, David. Two for the price of one. Okay, so he's going to heat the upper portions of the vessel, and then he's going, yes, it's an exact exacting process. I love it, guys. Keep it going. Yes, indeed. It's See, this is exciting. Yeah, I haven't had this much excitement in a long time. Okay, so now he's just going to use the tweezers to pull it down closer together. Notice as he's pulling that lip downward. And then he'll be able to work on closing it off completely by making a jack line right there. And notice he still turns clockwise towards himself. Now, when he breaks that off, it will probably be sealed. The yolks are great. Yes, they are, Jonna. No yolk, Ted. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> Alrighty, so now he's working on that area where he just closed off again. Hello, Bridget. Glad to have you with us. I don't know if you're just joining us now or for you or anybody that has. We're in the process of making an egg now. John is going to use the shears to cut that off, and the top now is completely sealed. But this does not look like an egg. Well, it looks like a misshapen egg, maybe. But we need to get the top blown out. Hence the blow punty. Now you can see the advantage in having this. While he heats the vessel, the expansion of any air inside the vessel escapes through the blow pipe. I can, yeah, I can actually feel it come out. Yeah, he can actually feel it, yeah. But you got to hear this one from David Hogan. I'm going to let you keep going. <laughs> Oblet. <laughs> Good one, David. All right, so the end of that is closed off. Josh could feel the back pressure of the air coming out the blow hose, actually. But now what he'll do is take this to the bench, grip the end of the piece with the newspaper. He's got the blow hose hooked up to the pipe, and we'll watch. We'll back up a little so you can see him blow. The piece is inflating, and then by using the newspaper, he gets that beautiful egg shape on it. Now it doesn't look anything like it did when he first... Yes, I'm a cracked egghead. <laughs> Good one. So now it doesn't look anything like it did when he first closed it off. He was able to inflate that and blow it out on the punty and get the perfect shape of the egg. So there's another technique that we really haven't demonstrated before, the use of the tungsten rod and also the blow punty which allows us 
Now he's just using the newspaper to gently guide the egg into shape, get it exactly like he wants. And by getting that end of the closed pot and blowing against it, he's able to get rid of any shards. Let's get a look at this beautiful swirl pattern in the end. And this piece is not spoken for. I'm sure one of y'all may want that. So, let us know. Okay, so, uh, uh, that's the egg. And I think Theodore posted the price of the eggs a little while ago. So, uh, anyway, if you're interested, it can be yours. So, there is what the egg looks like. Now, we're going to have a flower next. Spectacular. Good one, Barbara. Is an ostrich egg. It's huge. Okay, Marianne wants to purchase it. Theodore, know, we've got someone that wants it. Mary, Marianne uh, Kolobau wants it. And a lot of that's beautiful. Yes, it is. And the pattern is extremely beautiful. It is absolutely amazing. So it's going in the annealer, but uh, it'll be out for pictures tomorrow morning. And uh, anyway... That's that. So, they'll put that away. Let's see. We're going to do a flower. I, unfortunately, I don't have any flowers here. Uh, Josh will be pulling a solid flower out of glass. We'll show you that in just a moment. And then it'll be another type of flowered vessel, a jack in the pulpit. Followed up with a bird. All right. So, let's remind you once more, please, about the Maryland Cats. This is a charity event. We've got the colors of the Maryland flag. Todd has designed these colors, and they're actually very beautiful. The pieces, this is a limited edition, so their pieces are numbered, they're signed, and uh, so anyway, uh, you can get one too. They're $6 a piece, but that goes to charity. No Kid Hungry is the charity we support, and the shipping's included unless you're overseas. All righty, no bird and egg. Actually, if you want to see... If you really want to see a bird in the egg, go back to one of our very first videos back in August or September, and we did a spirit piece which centered around the idea of a phoenix rising. Only we didn't sculpt an entire phoenix. What we had was the head of a baby bird coming out of the egg, okay? So that was what we did, and uh, so anyhow... That was uh, a bird coming out of the egg. So we actually have done that, but not in this particular case, okay? So uh, there we go, and time for a flower. Let's go on back here. What? We have a special up. order, funny. Oh, okay. And it's for Mr. Barber, right here. The bunny for Barber. Oh, for Pam. For who? Pamela Ritter. Okay. So we're going to get special water right now. Pamela asked for bunny, yep. asked if she could watch it being made on the broadcast if there was time, and there is time. So, Pamela, this this bun's for you. Now, what's <laughs> special about this one is it's actually going to have a heart nose and a heart tail. A heart-shaped nose and a heart-shaped tail. Which I thought was a great idea. Uh -huh. Aha! Okay. And what colors did she choose? She likes the, the kind of green, teal, blues colors. Oh. So we're going to use that mix that we used actually on the egg. Okay, so this is the same uh, mix that he used on the egg. Okay, Kathleen McClendick, welcome aboard. Yeah, watch the first part later. It's been fun, though. we got a lot of egg jokes going on today and stuff, so... We're having some fun. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. It's an exciting kind of a day. All right, so Josh has gathered up white. Could be the background color on the bunny. So if you've joined us late and you didn't get to see the bunny made first off, you're in luck. We're going to have another one right now. So if anybody else wants to order a piece special, I don't believe we're going to actually have time to do more of these today. But you never know, but we can do them next week. That's exactly right. Okay. Ah, Rude did see the uh, phoenix coming out. Yeah. 
So that, there was an example of a bird breaking through the egg. And those are a lot of fun. Okay. See the steam coming off the block? That's created by the hot glass hitting the wet wood. And he's got that shape now. The actual shape of the glass makes a big difference, too, in our gathering. So it's not just a random thing when we go in and gather. We want that kind of uh, Q-tip shape, if you will, on the end. That facilitates the grab, uh, gathering and actually helps keep us from trapping bubbles as we gather. If we were to gather with flat of an end, that'd be an issue. There he goes with the glass coming off again. The little bit of arvering right there pushes it all back up over the end. Buns of glass, yes, uh -huh, as opposed to steel. <laughs> we got, yeah, we, I, that, hey. <laughs> I love it. We got this started. Let's roll with it. <laughs> That's right. You gotta go with it yeah. Okay, here's the challenge. Rude says, how about a bunny out of the egg? There we go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So now Josh has got that reheated in the glory hole. It's going to shape up a little bit more with the newspaper. What was that joke the last time? Somebody said you'd have to say three sheets of the wind instead of seven? Yeah. yeah, okay. But anyway, you're using the newspaper now to elongate and taper the glass. You can see the taper down toward the end. The newspaper folds it up like that, and then wet is a perfect insulator. You can even see the steam coming off of it in the background. So you use the jacks to create a point of separation between the iron and the glass. Because Pamela is not going to want this four and a half foot piece of steel attached to her bunny, I don't think, unless she intends to put it out as a yard ornament. But this iron would make a lousy stand for a yard ornament anyway. So Josh is going to heat that all up. Now he'll come back and create the divisions within the body of glass. And this will be to separate the body, the head, and the ears. So that line will separate the body, which is closest to the pipe. The head will be the middle area he creates now. Does that make it a jackrabbit? Good point. Yes, yes, he's using the jacks on it. Yeah, so good. All right, and then he separated the area for the ears there. And now he'll take a pair of flat blades. And we're going to come around here to the side and get a view of the flattening process when he comes back from a reheat. Uh, yes, Kimberly, we could make one of the bunny ears floppy by folding it over. If we chose to do that, we would probably do it toward the end of the piece because we wouldn't want it in the way while we created the rest of it. So here we'll see the flattening motion from an end view by using those blades. And unfortunately, they don't close parallel. They are tapered a little bit. Now he's cutting. And we're going to take a look at the end. I pointed this out on the last one, but if you weren't here, see how the ears are offset from each other. If you use a pair of scissors on a piece of paper, you see the same thing. Or if you use tin snips on a piece of sheet metal, one side curls up. And that's exactly what happened here with the glass. So, Rachel says she likes big bunny tails and she cannot lie. All right, who's got a bunny tail? It's story time. Oh, that's not what she's talking about, is it? Okay. All right, so now he's got that. It's time to come back over and straighten things up. Yes, uh, Kelly, one ear up and one ear down would be, but as we pointed out earlier, this is a custom order for Pamela, and I don't think that she asked how one ear folded over. But if anybody would like to order a bunny with a folded over ear, 
let us know and we'll get to work on it. Okay. Now he's going to hand this off to Foster. Foster's job at this point is going to be to reheat the piece to the point that it's warm enough not to crack. If it gets below 1,000 degrees or 1,100 degrees, it'll shatter. You got a joke. No, no, no. I, was, I was debating whether to do white or black for the eyes and the tail and nose. Well, unless Pamela speaks up really quick. I think it's going to be artist choice. I think it's, it's going, going to be, be black. I think with the white background, we're going to want the black eyes. Yeah, I would think with the white background, it, unless you one ear over easy. Oh, I like that. A combination of the bunny and the egg. David Hogan. That's a good one. Okay. So now Josh has got this piece of black glass, a little stringer. You can see that the bunny is actually falling due to the heat and gravity acting on it. Okay. So what Foster will do is just control that for a little while. When Josh is ready, he'll put this on. And as we mentioned earlier, is there a pile of cullet around? Uh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. This is the heart shape, right? Yeah. Okay. So Josh is going to put a couple of heart shapes on this for Pamela. Foster will take one last slash, come on over, and Josh will continue with the black. With all the white background in there, yes, Joanna, the colors are awesome. With the white background in there, a white tail or white eyes and other parts would probably not show up very well. Yeah, plus these greens actually get a lot lighter tomorrow when it's cold. Okay. So. We'll see more through it. Okay. Yeah. Was that somebody that used to work here, see more glass. Okay, is big of glass, Colleen or Kevin? Ask about color. Yes, we have color. And yes, we have color. Okay, so let's get back over here with the glass in progress. Color is just the broken off pieces of glass that we have. You can see him manipulating the glass right now, pulling it with that small hooking tool. It's the same one he used on the egg. All right, there goes the shaped nose on there. All right, hello Antoinette, I haven't seen you on yet this morning. Uh, maybe been there and I just didn't see the comment. Wobble well, board. So we're in the process of a custom-made bunny right now. While we were in the process of demonstrating a piece, one of the viewers says, I'd like to order one, and can I see it made if you have time? And the answer to that was, yes, yes. And here it is. This is for Pamela Ritter. To her specifications, Josh will put a little water on the joint between the iron and the glass. Tap it off, and tomorrow's pictures will show it live and in living color. Well, dead glass and in living color. But at any rate, thank you, Josh. Let's hear it for Josh. That was a marvelous job, okay? Foster's got it in the annealer. So let's go back and see what's up next. Gonna name it Harvey. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Alrighty, so, uh, so far, actually we had a little extra, if you got in late and didn't see the beginning of the show, Foster started us off with a custom order, which was one of a pair of stemless wine glasses. 
uh, looked kind of like those over there sitting on the marver. So that's at the beginning of our broadcast today. We followed that up with a bunny, and uh, we got that one put away, and all the conversation and all the jokes we've been having about eggs and bunnies and everything inspired Pamela to ask for another one to be made, which we were more than happy to accommodate. You saw Josh make that beautiful egg, and we also incorporated the, uh, the blue putty. And you'll just have to go back and look at it because I won't bother explaining that right now. But if you are a glass blower or know a little bit about the glass blowing, it really is an interesting technique and it's absolutely essential for the construction of certain vessels. Okay, so uh, after that, we'll be up with a flower. Josh will be doing that for us. Our winner from last week of this beautiful paperweight, Sharon Ernie. Okay. So Sharon, I saw you online earlier. Get thee to your uh, information for delivery and shipping, and it's on its way to you. And for those of you that are commenting today, this jack in the pulpit right here is our prize for the week. So it's your comments that get you entered in the drawing. So we have a computerized random drawing, and that selects who wins the prizes. And as you can see, we've got a variety of jack in the pulpits here. A lot of different shapes and everything. And Mary Ann Colaval. Colaval bought the egg? Yeah. Oh, bought the egg. So Beautiful. Um, all righty. And we'll have a couple of other pieces. Don't forget we offer gift certificates. Has the annealer temperature come back up enough that we could take a quick view of the egg? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Josh, sure, let's... Uh, Maybe just wait till I get over there with the camera. Is it on the left side? No, it's on the right side. Okay, so here it is in the annealer. There's the egg right there. Okay, so it's a little hard to see right now. It's dark in there. Okay, all righty. Yep, I think having two bunnies in the hutch is a, is a bad idea too. They're rather prolific in that regard. Maybe we'll open the annealer tomorrow and there'll be a dozen. Who knows? All righty. So Josh, now this is going to be a solid work flower. So he's using a, a solid iron, one that does not have a hole in it. There'll be no blowing involved in this piece. And he'll probably gather a couple times or just, and uh, he'll be using frit. Can't someone invent an annealer with a window? Well, they could, but it would be very, very expensive because you would have to have glass that could withstand temperatures in the range of 1,000 degrees. You see that Josh pushed that gather right down onto the end of the piece, flattened it out a little bit, kind of like uh, an old Tinker Toy wheel. The egg jokes just keep on rolling, that's right. And who's going to speak up and say, what's a tinker toy? All right. So now this is a pretty interesting process here. We'll describe what's going on. Josh is going to press it up toward the pipe. You can see that he's pushed it back some. And now he's going to grab his tweezers and bite all the way around the piece. He's not pulling so much right now as creating places to grab. If the tweezers heat up and begin to stick, he puts them in the water. Then he'll begin to start pulling it outward and upward. We'll come over here for a little better angle. The reason he put those little bites all the way around it was so he would have a place to grab. He's not pulling a great deal each time because if you just grab hot glass and pull like crazy, you just pull out a long string, okay? So, he's now twisting it, letting it cool on the end a little bit, and now he's going to grab it and pull it out for the stem. That little twisting, see how the end of the flower is more colorful? It's much, much colder. Now what he's going to do is turn the iron, and the glass that's down in the middle will twist. And this is going to make a beautiful stem. Sometimes we leave them straight, sometimes we curl them, 
it's always the artist's choice. He's not trying to cut that off right now. What he's doing is chilling it. He's creating a constriction, and at that chill point, when he taps the iron, it will break free and not break the flower. He's going to tap the iron. Foster's waiting with a gloved hand. And there it is. Full length flower. Beautiful job. Yes, it is very cool, Renee. And no, I don't know how much those are, but I'm sure Theta can help us out on that if anybody's interested. What he's doing now is making me, what he's, he's doing is making me nervous. Uh, oh, you mean when he's grabbing the iron, uh, grabbing the glass? With the insulated glove, he's perfectly safe. He's the boss. We wouldn't do anything to him. Okay. All righty. You would do everything to him. Okay. So what's up now? Yes, that was fast, Liz. That was a cool one. Yeah. Cheryl wants to know yeah. if it's yeah, spoken it's for. Not, not yet. Spoken. That's not yet. So just send uh, a message to Theta. She'll help yeah, out. message Theta, comment to her that you'd like it, and I'm sure that she'll work out a sale. Okay, so now I believe we're going to go to the Jack in the Pulpit, right? Okay, great. Well, hello, Bill O'Donnell. I've got dusty rose. There's a piece of jade in there. Okay. So you're going to do an overlay? Uh, we're going to drop it on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So they're both going to grab some color out of the annealer now. Foster's got what's called dusty rose, or a pink color, on the end of his iron. And he's going to heat this up. So this is going to be a small overlay, okay? And you can see that Josh is coming up with a piece of jade green. Now both of these are tiny. They're small pieces at this point. But when the piece is blown out, it'll be full size. Okay, so they're going to melt both of those in. And what will happen with this is Foster will shape the bit that's on the blowing iron into kind of a conical shape or a cylindrical shape and then Josh's piece will be dropped on the end of that. Then Foster will use a hooking tool or a raking tool to pull that down gently, bring the green down over the pink a little bit to give it a beautiful flower design. Well, Bill, we, we would enjoy seeing you again. Josh and I always enjoyed working with you. So let's jump over here and see what Foster's doing on the Marver. He's got the glass shaped out. He's going to flatten the end a little bit, roll some, cooling it off, and then he's going to prepare to receive the other bit. Yeah. Now, he did not blow into that because he didn't want to thin it out. Yeah, a bit ice pick works too, Antoinette. Josh brings the color over. They put it right up on top. Foster will cut it free. And then he'll straighten that out a little bit and start pulling it. So he's got his hooking tool there in place. And he's going to give himself just a little bit extra heat to work with. So along with hot glass moves and cold glass don't, Another good saying is, heat is the answer, no matter the question, when it comes to glass blowing. Foster put a little bit of extra heat in there so that he could take that little uh, piece of green, manipulate it, and now he's got a nicely formed cone, one color stuck on top of the other. His next move will be to heat that so that the green can be pulled down through or into the pink. He won't probably go all the way to the iron, but he'll come uh, just uh, a little ways toward it. So we walk over to the bench with him to get a good view of this. Here's his neatly designed hooking tool. He grabs the end of green and pulls it a little bit into the paint. And he'll go around on the other side and keep doing that. 
and this is going to be a beautiful design element in this. Now, whenever you pull the glass like that, you distort the shape a little bit. So it's back to the glory hole for a little bit of heat, maybe a little reshaping, see what he's up to there, and then eventually he'll set a bubble in the glass that will allow him to make the vessel. Alright, now you can see that as he rolls it on the barber, the glass is yes. moved into a nice conical shape. And he'll set the bubble now by blowing, covering the mouthpiece with his finger, and then we'll see the bubble come out in the hot glass. It'll enlarge a little bit. And I guess he's having a consultation with Ida over there. He'll be back in a minute. And just for today, we put this up on the board. We will be right back. All right. Okay, so here you can see where the, the jade green has been pulled down or up in whichever case you wish to look at it and to the dusty rose color. There we go. Okay, so now he's got that green overlaying the pink, which would kind of remind you of uh, the shape or look in a flower. Okay, a jack-in-the-pulpit is a plant that has a flowering section on it. And if you can imagine the green base of it or the stem and the leaves on it coming up into the flower, and that's what this is going to look like. So now a gather of clear gives us a little more volume, gives him something to work with, and my guess is he'll probably do another gather after that. So Bill asks, Bruce, what have you made in the shop lately aside from all the great color commentary? Well, so far I've been fully less than successful and creating a yin-yang platter. But I will get it one of these days, Bill. And uh, this, is, this is what my early efforts are looking like. Now, we don't want to look at that backside. So, uh, yeah, yeah the, the curves are there, proportions a little bit, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I usually come in on Mondays and work alone. And uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting process. And then I make it even more interesting. No, I don't tell uh, all these corny jokes to myself while I'm working <laughs> class. That you would don't. that would be that, no. I just talk to myself. That's right. It's on your head. It's all good. Ah, Patty Rocker says she likes it. Well, let's show it again once. Which side? Uh, I don't care. So anyway, when this gets worked out, it's going to be a lot more even, and it'll be prettier. The black kind of spread out there too much. Okay. Let's get back to the business at hand. Enough about the birthday boy. Okay, so Foster's got that blocked now, and in just a moment, he's going to blow again, trap the air in it, and you'll see the bubble expand. And that happened really pretty quick, okay? And you know why. Because hot glass moves and cold glass don't. <laughs> Foster shaping it up a little bit with the block right now. Again, the shape of the glass before we gather is really important. It affects whether or not we pick up bubbles. It also affects whether we gather evenly or not. So we want to be sure that we've got that uh, time for a camera hooked up on Mondays. Thank you, Rude. That would be kind of funny. Okay, so now Foster is uh, going to get another gather of glass on there. And this will probably be his final gather. The jack in the pulpit's not going to be uh, six feet tall or anything like that. In case you're wondering what they look like, here are a variety of them over here. We do go from big to small on them and a variety of shapes. But uh, Foster will let us know this is probably more akin to what he's going to do today. Will this be footed, Foster? Yes. It will be footed. Okay, so... Here is a footed black uh, jack in a pulpit, okay? 
with the two colors of blue and you can kind of see how one rises up through the other. All right, he's got his heat driven in there. That move where he dips the iron down like that elongated it. If the glass contracts too close to the pipe, he needs a little length. He just did it again. He's like Britney Spears. Whoops, he did it again. Okay. You like that one, Josh? Come on. I come. Had, I had he has he has he has no reference. <laughs> okay. All righty. He usually tells, Josh usually tells me he has no idea who Jack Benny or Jackie Gleason are, so I had to throw a little Britney Spears in there. You, know who Britney Spears is. you don't know who Britney Spears is? Come on! <laughs> then you've, you've been living in a cave. <laughs> no, uh, he's going to use the footing tool, Bill. This will not be the cookie foot. We'll actually Bill drop the foot on. Bill O'Donnell. Oh. Bill O'Donnell. Yeah, friend of mine and Josh. Okay, into the optic mold for the ridges. And he'll blow real hard. That'll force the glass out into those recesses. And once recess is over, we'll have lunch. Okay. <laughs> All right, back to the bench. Ah, Bridget Blakemore sends us a... Uh, a free Britney hashtag. All right, a little emphasis on the jack line now. The newspaper cools the bottom just as the marble would, and now he's going to blow that out a little bit, increase the diameter. Okay, and back in for more heat. You ready to elongate? Yes, sir. I, okay, here it goes for Josh. Do you know who Swing Out Sister is? No. Okay. <laughs> Does Foster know? No. no. Oh, you're going to have to look it up. Google. Go. Google it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So using a little bit of centrifugal force. Notice how it does that gently first before he spins around. When glass is its hottest, it will move its most. Hey, hot glass moves, right? All right. So by controlling... The speed that he does that, he gets a beautifully uniform shape. Yes, that was the phone, Rachel. Can we all say at the same time, phone, Rachel? <laughs> Rachel, 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 phone! Yeah, okay. That's kind of an inside joke, so that's really not fair to everybody else. Let's watch Foster swing it out just a little bit more for some height. Uh, we'd had someone around the studio sometime in the past that whenever the phone rang, would uh, shout out to Rachel, Rachel, phone! Like she was supposed to jump up and get it. At any rate, Foster's now checking that for the proper length. And when he comes back over this time, if things slow down just a little bit in the rotation, and we'll be able to show you the color differentiation. So here's the jade green coming up from the bottom, pulled up a little bit, with the pink up toward the top. He's using a pair of paper pegs now. They're actually cardboard tubes. They help shape the glass, stabilize it, but they don't steal near as much heat as the uh, metal jacks do. Now, some of you that are glass blowers may use the wooden jacks, the parchofi. Foster chooses to use the paper peg. It all depends on what you grew up with. His first steps out of the cradle were to grab paper pegs. Okay, so he's picking up glass now for the foot. He'll get a couple of gathers of glass. Josh is watching him. When he sees Foster's about done, he'll get his last flashes in here, and then he'll follow him to the bench. Can you tell an inside joke if you are outside? I guess so. All right, Foster will shape the glass a little bit, Use the jacks to create a line for it to fall away from the iron. Josh holds the piece upright. He's keeping it turning right now so Foster can spot center, drops the glob on there, and cuts it off. Yes, glob is the technical glass blowing term. He'll use his footboard now to pat it flat 
and then use the put the glass between the boards and squeeze. And as he squeezes, it thins the glass out, gives it that beautiful knife edge right there. It's still not formed in such a way that it would stand, all right? But a trip to the glory hole will provide him the heat he needs. When he comes back, he'll use his carbide tool to shape the foot. Yes, it is a clear foot, Antoinette. So when he comes back over, this tool he's got is, is really kind of cool. He could use jacks, but the carbide takes less heat. So what he's going to do now is flatten it a little bit. Then he's going to turn that tool over. And you can see the curved edge of the tool allows him to make that profile. And that's what looks so very, very nice. Yes, Root, teamwork is so important. And actually, while he's been doing that, Josh has already formed the punty. Foster will flash the piece. So this is a little bit different order than Foster sometimes does the transfers, where he brings the putty, but it really doesn't matter. He'll accept the putty from Josh, place it in the center, and then turn both irons to get it centered. Centering is simply alignment with the central axis of the piece. A little drop of water on the neck, and a tap of the pipe, and off it comes. Beautiful transfer, beautiful transfer. That's usually the breath holding moment in the glass blowing process, is to make sure that everything that's supposed to let go does, and what ain't supposed to let go doesn't. All right, so the end of that vessel was cold enough to fracture, break free from the pipe. That's where Foster's going to concentrate the heat. So we can come over here and view from the side and see that he really doesn't have that very deep into the glory hole, okay? Every once in a while, the whole thing will go in for what we call a flash heat. That allows all of it to stay warm, well above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see the glow in the end of the piece. That's where the heat is. If he chooses, he'll open it a little bit and possibly shear it if he doesn't feel that it needs cutting then he won't gets it opened up a little bit and he's reaching for a steam cone which will come next the steam cone is another piece of cherry wood only it's solid in its conical shape it sits in water and you can imagine what happens when he sticks that cone into the end of this open piece. Steam is created from heat. The outward pressure of the steam causes the end of the vessel to blow out up. It'll get a bowl shape from which he will finish up Jack in the Pulpit. Yes, Patrick, the colors are great. They really are a wonderful combination. So here we go with the steam stick. Watch the shoulder area of the vessel. He's cooling the lip right there. That keeps it from collapsing. Now you'll see it inflate, and that is simply due to the steam pressure pushing out. There we go. Was it James Watt invented this? Who was a Scottish guy invented the steam engine, wasn't it? No, yeah, that was even before my time. Okay. Very, very much, very much spring colors. Okay. Bruce, I wasn't around for when the steam engine. Okay. All righty. The iron horse. Yeah. Okay. Now Foster's going to heat the end of that. It's going to eventually take that bowl that's at the top, and he's going to open that up to the point that it's almost flattened, and it'll look a little bit like a top hat and then he'll take that circular shape and fold it around. I like to give you explanations that make no sense when you first hear it, but then when you see it, you say, oh, that's what he's talking about. And there's that bulbous shape being flared out, and he'll probably take another heat and flare it out even more to where the lip of the vessel is perpendicular to the central axis. You like that central axis stuff, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. George Henry Corliss. Thank you, Antoinette. Okay. 
now. The centrifugal force has almost flattened that out now, but now you can see that the lip area of that is almost perpendicular to the central axis. He'll fold one end outward, one end back in toward the pipe, and apply more heat. So yeah, these are beautiful spring colors. He needs a little more room to get in that glory hole door. There he goes, okay. He's using the post that holds the yoke up to flatten the one side a little bit. And that brings it down closer to the body of the flower. Now he's trying to concentrate the heat mainly in the tip that they will pull. Josh has a pair of tweezers in his hand and together they're going to work this out. Foster again uses the metal pipe that's part of the yoke stand just to shape the glass. So what's happening there is all of it's getting hot, but he doesn't want all of it misshapen. And he was using that metal tube to then go against it. So now it's back to the bench. He'll hold it steady. Josh will grab it with the tweezers, two-handed grip, and pull upward on it. And here's your jack in the pulpit shape. Beautiful work, beautiful work, okay? And just as I told you before, this one here is a perfect model for it, okay? So, and those are all jack in the pulpits there. This one's not spoken for either. So if you would like this one, contact Theta, and uh, it can be yours. And if you're local or really very close, it might be on your table for Easter Sunday. It will be out at the annealer tomorrow. Okay, so Foster's putting on the glove as opposed to putting on the Ritz and he's going to use the butter knife to chip the putty. When he takes the hammer handle, he'll hit the pipe and Josh is going to hold the pipe to give Foster a free hand. Okay, and there we go. Beautiful. And off to the annealer goes. Thank you. Did he just air marker? Uh, air marver? He didn't air Marver, but uh, at one point after they pulled it, Antoinette, he did want to set the side a little bit. So he came back out of the heat and pressed it against the metal pipe on the yoke stand. But uh, that was just to get the alignment right. Yeah, let's hear it for Foster. That was an amazing piece. Yeah, the yoke, yeah. It's right in line with all the egg jokes from earlier. Yep, yep. Okay. Let's see if we can make you dizzy turning around. Sorry about that. All right, so we're pretty much coming toward the end of things. Uh, we started off today with a stemless wine glass. Custom order for that, and Foster made one. Uh, we did the bunny, and in process with the bunny, one of the viewers decided they wanted one and ordered one, and we managed to work that in as another demonstration today. So as somebody has pointed out, we now have two bunnies in the oven. And as prolific as bunnies are, maybe we'll have a dozen tomorrow morning. Okay, and after the bunny, we did the egg. Oh, I don't know which came first, the bunny or the egg. But we have that beautiful egg shape. If you're joining us late, you really want to go back and see that. Especially those of you that are glass blowers, because it involved blow punty. And it also involved some really interesting ways of twisting the glass color to get the decorative shape. All right, and then Josh showed you how we can pull a flower out of solid glass. Foster's done your jack in the pulpit, and upcoming next will be another bird to stay in line with the, the seasonal springtime thing. Uh, Sharon won last week's prize, the paperweight. Okay, and somebody's going to win this jack in the pulpit through their comments. Well, not quality of your comments and not necessarily the quantity. Everybody that comments gets entered in a little computerized program that Josh has, and it spits out a random name. So 
So that's the prize for next week. I'd like to also reemphasize we're down to the last two days of March, and that's going to be it for the Cats for Kids project. These uh, Maryland cats, they're made in the Maryland colors, and they're $60 a piece. Half goes to the charity No Kid Hungry, and we've gotten quite a few orders for it, and we want a lot more if we can get the orders in by tomorrow night. We'll keep Todd busy making them as long as he needs to to finish the orders. And each piece is signed and numbered. It is a limited production. If you're interested in giving someone glass but don't know, thank you, Antoinette. Appreciate it. Yep. Today's my birthday. Uh, gift certificate. So you can order a gift certificate and send that off to someone you know that would like to have a piece of our glass, but you don't want to be responsible for picking it out because sometimes that's kind of a heavy load. All righty. And so now Josh is going to, are you going to give us the bird? <laughs> Yay! Okay. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Okay. So this is another solid sculptural piece. What's the color for this? Red? Garnet? Garnet. So I have like a cardinal that kind of lives outside my kitchen window. So it's not going to quite be a real cardinal, but we'll kind of get it. Okay. Ah, Barbara Gould Belzer says just don't flip the bird, it might break. <laughs> all right, so now he's got all the glass he needs for that. He's going to start picking up the frit. And again, I'd like to use this white background on it. It'll let the uh, light penetrate the transparent color that will and then be reflected back. It's a garnet red, and Antoinette is on like 143. Okay. He's going to get a nice red coating. And so off he goes with that. And once he gets all the color on there, he'll begin to shape it up. No, he's not actually making a cardinal. This is going to be kind of stylized. It's going to be a bird. Ah! He's changing it up on us. It's not just going to be completely covered in red. It's going to have, it's going to have a white streak on the belly. So you can see what he did there. He concentrates the red on one side. doesn't go all the way around. And the beauty of doing it this way is the red will overlie the white a little bit. And that'll be the back of the bird. And that's why he's not concerned that this has been curved. He can go ahead then and roll it on the marble and start stringing it out. Once he's got all the color on it, then he can begin to shape it. Again, the block helps get it. Yes, it is solid, Antoinette, on a solid iron. Or are you just commenting on the quality, like, solid? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> A little bit shaky. So, are you on fire day because it's your birthday, or just it's just a good day? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't start it. Somebody else started it. But as somebody said earlier, I don't need much egging on. Once, once we get started, it's tough to stop. All right. Now he's got that done. He'll take another gather of glass. And again, if you see him raise his arms quite high while he's in the furnace and lift the pipe, that's so the glass dribbles back into the furnace and it's reusable. If he's got a little more than he wants, he's got a few seconds that he can point it downward, and you see that did not flow as much. Okay? So now what he can do is take the shears and pull it, and 
then snip it off. A bird, Bridget. Josh is giving us the bird. Again with the newspaper to shape it. Yeah. <laughs> what is it, Bruce? What's in a reference to? Oops, I did it again. Oh, whoops, I yeah. The paper. Oh, the Brittany. Yeah, go. yeah, of course. <laughs> no, I was looking at the paper. I thought we were going to go back to three sheets of wind. When, in fact, we don't have three sheets of newspaper. We've got about seven. If we didn't have enough newspaper folded up there, it'd burn right through to your head. A bird is the word. The bird, 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 the bird, the bird. You probably don't know that one either. Never mind. Okay. A little line of separation of the head of the bird, and then a point down toward the bottom where he'll put a crease in. Tweet, tweet. Ooh! Is this Rockin' Robin? There it is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. He'll pinch the back side a little bit. That sounds a little off color, but he's creating the tail right now. Notice that he does this a little bit at a time. He creates a point to reach in and grab. He does not pull the glass a great distance. If he tried to go really far with it, it'd pull out into a really thin string, and he doesn't want that. He wants the broader tail, and by doing it slowly and under control, he manages to keep just that. got the beak pulled out and now by using the tweezers more or less like a jack blade he's able to put the creases in that separate the neckline or where you would find the head attached to the body. He can do a few more adjustments to the shape of the tail, a little bit of curvature. Every time you pull on the glass in one spot it actually distorts it a little bit somewhere else. So when he pulled that beak out it flattened the line between the back of the head and the body. So he had to readjust it just a little bit. It's anticipating those things that really get you to the point that uh, you can create these beautiful shapes. And the bird's not spoken for either, so if you'd like the bird, if you would like Josh <laughs> to give you a bird, notice I said A, not B, okay, <laughs> it's available. So all those pulls, now he comes back and adjusts what went out of line. trying to cut that glass off. He's just crimping it there and that's where it will break. He's needed to compress it a little bit. When he's ready, he'll put the water into that joint, knock it free, and it'll be ground. Bridget, we're going to have to defer to Theta to let you know how much the birds are. I'm sure she'll get back to you. A little tap of the iron, and off it comes. And there's the bird. Beautiful, beautiful job. All right, let's hear it for Josh. Thank you. The and bird, nice the bird is the word. Absolutely. Yeah, this red is really going to turn out beautiful. Okay. All righty, into the annealer it goes. We've got them all in there for the day. So uh, let's give a little recap. Let's give a let's give a round of applause to Josh Rees yeah, and to Foster Holcomb and of course to Theta. And for those of you that haven't seen her, let's go find Theta. All right. All right, let's, let's hear it for Theta, the brains of the outfit. Yeah, she's the one that keeps us all straight. Okay, so 
Uh, we've got uh, all our pieces in the annealer. We made uh, we made a stemless wine glass for you. Several bunnies, and with at least two of them in there, we're hoping there'll be a dozen in the morning. An egg, which is really beautiful. I would highly recommend, if you join this late, go back and watch the egg portion being made. That uh, is really, really different. And we did the flower, a jacket and pulpit, and, and the bird. So next week we'll have more for you. Please, uh, your comments get you entered in a drawing for this jacket and pulpit. Congratulations, Sharon, on winning the paperweight for last week. And don't forget, there's still time, a day and a half, to get in on the Maryland Cat Program. So, thank you all for joining us. And we're going to sign off now. And I'm going to tell myself happy.